Hi everybody, welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Fudge. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, that is one of the greatest rock and roll songs of all time from the album Bat Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell. That's from Meatloaf and uh, singer, songwriter, composer Jim Steinman. Of course, we lost Meatloaf last week. And um, Bat Out of Hell and Bat Out of Hell 2 are both two of the most seminal rock and roll albums in the world. And when news of uh, Meat Love's Passing hit me in the morning, I was working on some other projects and thought, oh man, what a great, great pair of albums. And Meat Love did lots of other stuff, so did Jim Steinman. Uh, but these two albums figured largely in my growing up. And I realized I didn't have any Meat Love songs in my repertoire because most of those songs are so big and operatic and theatrical and involved and complex. And I thought, why even try to do that on, on, on the dulcimer with a limited range like we've got? And I thought, you know what? I just finished doing Fairy Tale of New York. Why not? So I started messing around with this great song. I do anything for love, but I won't do that. And it turns out that it's purely diatonic. There's no tricks, there's no borrowed chords or accidentals. It really exists as a very, very simple, simple rock song. And it, and it translates very well. So I do have the tablature available for you uh, for free to download if you'd like to have it. Now there are a number of versions. Of course, the album edit, the album version of this tune is over 11 minutes long. And it involves a lot of other stuff. And we'll talk about that later. Then there's sort of a mid-range edit at 7 minutes and 41 seconds, and that's still got a lot of extra stuff that you may need a looper pedal or some other things to take advantage of stacking some of the stuff going on. The big rock out moment, stuff like that. But this is the edit, uh, the radio edit, that comes in around uh, 5 minutes or so, which is still pretty long for a radio edit, considering back in the day it was like 3 minutes and 20 seconds, 3 minutes and 40 seconds would be the length of your tune. So it's kind of epic for a song, but nonetheless, that's what I'm doing right now is the radio edit, and that is what the tablature reflects. I will give you some pointers on how to take this tablature and blow it up into the full length album version. So let's go ahead and uh, once again, the URL for the download here, so you can get this tablature and follow along on Patreon. And now let's go ahead and step into it. The best way to go about handling this is to break it down into different pieces. There's the intro, which is on the piano, you know? And that's the only time that we hear that is at the beginning of the tune. And um, so that is the intro at the very beginning. I've got it sequestered there in one measure with repeat symbols, so you can run it as long as you want to. I'm planning on looping it to do the rocker intro uh, for the album version. And uh, again, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, the next uh, verse, or next, sorry, next measure is where we kind of slow things down with that, with the retard. And you can end that on the 101. But we're basically ending it on the A. And then we walk into uh, the verse. And so the verse is always going to be, I'm sorry, actually we're leading right into the chorus. And so there's a chorus and there's a repeat chorus. The chorus itself is, I would do anything for love, I'll run right into hell and back. It's the one that has extra verses, or, or extra lines rather. And so the repeated one is where it just goes over and over again, I would do anything for love. Two of those in this uh, arrangement. So the verse... So if you're going to be walking this up, I would do it on a, the melody string alone. If you're going to provide any sort of chords in the background, make sure that you've got an A major chord uh, behind it to make it work. Okay. Okay. Now a little piano part. Dum bum. We're just coming up and doing this. Partial A chord, partial G chord. Repeat that down here. And 
then I reverse it. I invert both of those so we have the same chords, but they sound just a little bit different. Now we walk in here, the B minor. Okay, now even though it's not written there, I like to do a little bit of a retard right there at the end, as it does in the recording, and that is the chorus. We'll come back to that one more time, but we'll also do a repeat chorus where we are just going to have that line going over and over again, and we'll do that twice as well. So now we're getting into the hook, and it's an instrumental hook. The hook is, I would do anything for love, anything you've been dreaming of, right? but it's uh, played instrumentally as opposed to actually sung. So that happens right after Won't Do That. On that, we kick right in with this. And depending on what version you do of that, you're either gonna play it one time, as in the radio edit, or you'll play it two times or four times, depending on uh, what version you're doing. And then right into the verse. Now there are three big chords here. B minor, G, E7, and then D. You're pretty much playing the same melody throughout and that's happening on the middle string. melody string mostly, and then going to the middle string. And do it again. playing from my head, I'm not playing it from the music, I'm internalizing the tune. So if it doesn't match note for note as far as the timing, it's because I'm thinking of other verses and whatever. Um, then we go into the pre-chorus. The pre-chorus is an interesting little creature, and basically it's not quite a bridge, but it's kind of like a bridge, and it's bridging the verse and the chorus. And so this is the pre-chorus, and a lot happens here. We come out of our G here into D, B minor, A, and back to G, B minor, and then we get into some really cool stuff here. We have an E minor, technically, then we have a C sharp diminished. G major, and then same notes as a C sharp diminished, but playing as an A7 chord, okay, now here's where we get into our chorus that's going to repeat. And then from here we go into the hook. So we're going to be doing this. That's the melody. It's going to be the same every single time we pass through it. Now what's changing are the chords. We're going to start off with just a D. Notice I'm using my ring finger here because when we hit this B minor, we're going to take the ring finger up and still hold our B minor. Get 
get into our G, same thing. Keep the ring finger down on one. And lift it up. And then... From here, we go back into the verse. Pre-chorus. Uh oh, sorry, B minor. And do it again. And chorus is going to be like the first chorus that we played. It actually has extra lines in there and we're playing the partial chords A and G a little bit differently. Now here we're going to segue into uh, the duet, and the duet of course is where after all of this of meatloaf singing, the girl comes in and is like, wait, hold up, hold up, we got to talk about this thing, kind of like Paradise in the Dashboard Light. And, um, and so she sings a part and then he comes in with, I can do that, I can do that. Again, depending on the version you're playing, you're going to play this a number of different times. In the tablature, I have it two times as a repeat. Um, as an instrumental, I think that's good, but if you want to keep taking it around for every uh, verse that she sings and that Meat sings back to her, that's going to be off the top of my head. It's like a total of seven verses there in the duet section. Uh, the radio edit does four of the verses, and then 741 does a certain number off the top of my head. I forget what that is. Maybe five, maybe four, five and then all seven verses in the album version. So because there are different verses, because there are different words and syllables and combinations of phrases and sentences, then the number of strums and strokes you're going to use for these melody notes is going to be different depending on what verse you choose to use, whichever one speaks to you. So I'll mix up a couple different ones here. So we're coming right out of the end of the chorus. you do however many verses of the duet part you want to do, we wrap up the tune. And the radio edit, after four verses, actually does this. And 
I mean, it really, really cuts the end of the song pretty tight. But they were trying to do all they could to squeeze it in to be as long as it ended up being, which was not close enough to the three minutes and 40 seconds, which was sort of the standard. Um, I don't want to tie it up that quickly, so I actually play it around to make it more of the repeat. and then resolve back down to the D. You could also do the repeat. And go right to the D and resolve without going to the G. Um, I think I'm going to leave the G in because it sets up the resolution a lot nicer. And then that's it. Now, that's the radio edit as tabbed out. I changed a couple of things in how I perform it, and I changed a little bit in terms of what's included in the radio edit. For example, the second verse, somewhere in there I added back in another verse because it didn't seem to make sense to me to take one of those verses out. In any case, if you play this version along with the radio edit, you may end up with extra measures here and there, just letting you know. Now, as far as the other version, 741 we'll call it, and the album version, They've got a lot more effects and interludes and big sections that just simply rock out using some of the stuff we've already looked at. There are two elements, however, that we haven't gone over for that if you want to get into it. And one of them I simply call hits. You'll hear this very much in the 741 edit and in the album edit. It starts off with this. And then over the top, you hear, right? Okay, what we got going on there is G, F sharp, A, and then slide off of it. Okay? So, and then it goes, So what we've got is this um, E, F sharp, G, first time through, walk down E, F sharp, and then A. Now I'm showing you on the bass side just so you can really kind of feel it and hear it and, and, and get it there. But you can do that over on this side. Now, <laughs> I'm not doing the piano part and this at the same time. I'll be looping this. And now I'll come over and go, then again, and then, so forth and so on. Um, so this comes up again, and I want to say it is right after, uh, it's right after the hook. So we're going, so, does this.
okay? So after the, after the hook, which is sung, along with the chord changes, we then kind of hang out in D for a bit, and then we go into this E, F sharp, G, E, F sharp, A. I call that the rising line. It's used at the beginning, and it's also used for these rock out sections uh, in the middle of the piece. And then after we do that a few times, then we come back to our instrumental hook, which we actually started this whole thing with. And then we get into the second verse, and that's how we go from there. There are other little rock out sections, most notably at the very, very beginning of the album version of the piece. And uh, it's that same thing. It's E, F sharp, G, with soloing going on the whole bit. So you lay that where you, where you will. But the most important thing about getting this thing under your fingers is to, first of all, internalize it, know it backwards and forwards, love the song, and then piece together these different sections based on how you want it to move. Maybe create your own mix. But that, in a nutshell, are the pieces of I do anything for love, but I won't do for oh, I won't do that. Which is really funny because of all the contractions, Jim Steinman, <laughs> Meat Love called him uh, long-winded, and his titles are long. You know, objects in the rearview mirror may appear closer than they are. Good girls go to heaven. Bad girls go everywhere. And of course, this one, I do anything for love, but I won't do that. Which is funny because Meat Loaf never sings, I'd do anything. He always sings, I would do anything. So why the contraction in the title? I don't understand that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Things to think about before you're going to sleep. I hope you enjoy the tablature. I hope you enjoy the arrangement. And I want to hear a lot more people playing meatloaf out there in the jams and on stage at Mountain Dulcimer Festivals everywhere. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. This has been our all skill levels uh, episode for the month. And we'll be back with our usual routine, at least for 2022. We'll be back with our beginner, our intermediate, and our advanced level tutorials in the month of February. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you then.